All right, so what you're looking at here is a Mazda rotary engine. This is out of a 1984 Mazda GLC SE, I'm sorry, GSL SE, thinking of a, a different car. Um, so this is a two rotor Wankel engine. That's a rotary engine, it's 1300 cc's, actually less than that. They call it a 13B. And the transmission is attached here, it has a five-speed transmission. And it's the GSL SE, which has the closest gear ratios. And I've made notes of what the gear ratios are there. Again, this is the GSL SE transmission. It was the top of the line transmission in 1984, the first year for the fuel injected model. You can see it is REEGI. It's a fuel injected motor. It has four or six fuel injectors, I forget. I think it has four. Two primaries and two secondaries. And they are it's underneath here. You can see the progressive throttle body which I've got propped open right now. Uh, what I mean by a progressive throttle body is this would be the primary barrel and these two would be the secondary, kind of like a four barrel. Hang on, let me turn the furnace off so you can, can hear me. I'm getting ready to do a compression test on this engine. There we go. So I've got the battery down here. I've got a battery charger right there and I've tested my old battery to make sure it's good. And I've got my compression tester hose here and my trusty snap-on compression tester gauge here and I'm going to try to orchestrate all this stuff and show you how a compression test is done on a rotary engine. So for each combustion chamber you've got a leading and a trailing spark plug. As the rotor comes around it would uh, hit the leading first and then the trailing. Uh, because the rotors are elliptical and they have a large combustion chamber they require two spark plugs at different rates or a different timing point to burn the complete mixture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my trusty, if I can do this, one hand, hold on a second here, okay. I got it hooked up here and I'm going to prop the compression tester up right there and I'm going to grab my starter gun here which is hooked up to my starter and hold on to your ears. We're going to see how much compression the number one rotor has. Are you ready? So we've got 100 PSI in the front rotor. Let me pop this off and switch around here. There's a fellow who's interested in this engine and I wanted to prove to him that it was a good either rebuildable core or it could be used as is. I personally would rebuild it because it smoked a little bit, but I think he's concerned about the compression to know if it is rebuildable. I'm gonna plug my compression tester back in here again. There we go. And you can see we are on the number two rotor on the leading uh, plug hole. I'm gonna put the compression tester back up here again and I'm going to grab my starter gun and let's see if you can get a see that focus on that looks like about 110 maybe 115 so the difference of Whoops, I turned the camera off there. I was saying the difference of, of compression between the two is not supposed to exceed 20 PSI. So the leading uh, uh, la, 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 rotor has 100 PSI and the trailing uh, a little less than 115. I think it's a good motor. For the price I'm asking, it's a great motor for somebody and a car comes with it. So let me know what you think. This is our introductory rotary test session. Again, this is a um, 1984 Mazda GSL SE motor, complete starter, fuel injection, wire harness, computer, throttle body, mass airflow sensor, oil cooler, starter, I think I said that, transmission, uh, even the slave cylinder goes with it, smoking deal somebody, especially it's going to do conversion. 
All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching me compression test this rotary engine. We'll see you later.